Today, we're going to have a little bit of lesson about how our lives are similar to this pumpkin and how Jesus works in and through our lives as we work with this pumpkin. So before we begin, may I see those hands? Open, shut them, open, shut them, give a little clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them, put them in your lap. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness. And we thank you for your faithfulness to work inside each one of us. Right now, as we spend some time in your word and having a lesson, I pray that you would teach us, that you would teach us what it means for us to allow you to have your way in each one of us. We ask that you would be glorified. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, boys and girls, we are going to begin with our lesson. And here I have some tools. These different knives. Oh, I don't think that's very comfortable. Some scissors and a spoon. And with that, we are going to have a little lesson. Imagine that our life is this pumpkin and we accept Jesus into our life. We want him to be our Lord and Savior. And at that time, Jesus begins to work. And like a surgeon with a scalpel, he cuts and he cuts away things that aren't of him. What might those types of things be? Well, let's see. 1 Corinthians 13 says, in verse 4, love is patient and love is kind. It also says that it does not envy and it does not boast and it is not proud. Well, maybe this could be some unkindness in our lives. Maybe Jesus needs to take out some proud boasting in our lives. Maybe we want what other people have. Mm, maybe our friend just got a brand new toy and we want that toy. That new car, that new doll, that new... Whatever your favorite thing might be. Bike, maybe. And we want that and we have a little bit of envy in our heart. Well, you know what? We learned that love is not easily angered, but maybe we get angry. And maybe those are things that Jesus wants to take from our lives. Maybe, maybe we keep records of wrongs. Maybe when somebody hurts us, we like to hold on to it. And it's all inside, and we have to give that to Jesus. And you know, our insides, even though people can't see them, they can be a little stinky. You know, this stuff is stinky. And they can be a little slimy. This stuff is very slimy. I don't like it very much. It's kind of gross. And as I continue reading, it says that love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. And maybe sometimes if somebody's been mean to us and they get in trouble, we're happy. Yeah, that's not what the Lord wants for us. So he has his way and he's working in us so that we can become loving, so that we can become patient, so that we can... Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. The Lord's just working on us, taking out our anger. And maybe we have to give him, oh, our frustrations or our grumpy grouchiness. All that stuff in there. So as we continue to read God's word and look at some verses, we find out what else does God want us to be like? Well, Ephesians 4 tells us, Ephesians 4 We'll begin at verse 29. It says, do not let any unkind word come out of your mouth. So maybe there's some unkindness we have to pull out. But only what is helpful. Oh, yes, for building others up according to their needs, that it may help all who hear. So maybe we got to remove some of the unkindness. And we're to get rid of, maybe there's some bitterness in there. we got to get rid of bitterness, the Bible says. And we need to get rid of, oh, listen to this, rage. Do you ever get angry? Rage and anger. Maybe your brother breaks your favorite toy and you get angry. Maybe 
Your sister messes up your Lego you were building and you're angry. Well, the Lord wants to take our anger, right? He wants us to give it to him. He doesn't want us to fight or say mean things. He wants all unkindness to be done away with. Why? Because he wants us to be kind, the Bible says, and compassionate to one another. When other people hurt us, he wants to us to have forgiveness instead of our anger. Forgiveness, it says forgiving each other, just as God forgave you. And why? Why does he want to remove all this yuck inside of us? Your yuck might look different than my yuck. Your yuck might be not telling the truth. My yuck might be not being very kind or being maybe holding a grudge or maybe being bitter. Your yuck and my yuck, well, it's all just yuck. And we want to give it to Jesus and allow the Holy Spirit to have his work in us so that we can be clean, so that we can be clean on the inside. Because you know what happens when we're clean on the inside? Well, when we're clean on the inside, we get to do and we get to live like Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 says. It says, 14 through 16, it says in Matthew 5, it says, oh, let me find it. Verse 14, you are the light of the world. The Bible says, a city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that, you may, that they may see your good works and praise your Father in heaven. So the Lord wants to work in our lives. And he wants to work in our lives and remove all the yuck and all the stinkiness and all the unkindness. And he wants to remove it all so that he can shine through us. And when he shines through us, when light shines, we don't hide light. We don't put it under a bushel, the Bible says, or under a basket. We don't want the light to go out. We want it to shine bright, so bright so that others can see. But you know, sometimes my ickiness, my sin, my yuck gets in the way of that light. So we need to give all of our sins and all of our troubles and all of our problems over to Jesus so that we can shine for him. And you know, when we shine for him and we look like Jesus, we show his love to the whole world. And that is the idea behind this lesson today, that we would really let the Lord's light shine through us, that we would let it shine so much so that other people can see it. And that they can know Jesus. You know, he's working in each one of us and having his way in each one of us. And that is a beautiful thing. Because none of us are perfect. And none of us get it right all the time. But as we let the Holy Spirit work in us and change us, well, we begin to shine so that we can show his love to the whole world. And that's exactly what Jesus wants from us. He wants us to let him work in us. He wants us to give him all our sins and all our hurts and troubles. And that's why he died. And then he wants to fill us so that we can show others his love. And do you know what the Bible says? The last verse I want to read you is Philippians 1.6, where it says, Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. You know, God started a work in each one of you, and he's not done with you, and he's not done with me. There is still some yuck in this pumpkin. And you know what? For the rest of my life, the Holy Spirit's going to be cleaning it out. And every time I sin or make a mistake, I'm going to confess, and he's going to keep having his way in me. And every day, hopefully more and more, I will be shining my light and allowing people to see the love of Jesus. That's our lesson for today, boys and girls, and I hope that you were encouraged. And before we're finished, let's go ahead and pray. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thought, thank you for this lesson. We thank you that you're having your way in each one of us. 
And we pray that we would live in such a way that you shine through us. That we can show this lost and hurting world what it means to have a Savior friend, Jesus. That we would do good works. That we would be kind. That our words would be loving. That our actions would be loving. That we would be forgiving when people hurt us. And I pray that we would give you all the yuck inside of us so that you can have your way. It is in your Son, Jesus' name that we